I was thinking recently that I would really like to continue to talk about heartbreak and the breakup on my podcast in some way. And immediately this part of my brain was like, oh, are you sure you want to go there? Like it's been so long and you're so okay now. Like why even go there? But I just realized regardless of where I'm at now, there is just some part of me that remembers what that felt like. And it doesn't even have anything to do with another person. It's just my pain that I know I went through. And it was just so, so hard. And so the thought of someone else going through the same right now just makes me want to continue to go there. And I think anyone who's been where I was understands exactly why it's so important to talk about these things because it can just make you feel so alone but we're not alone in it and I guess that's all I'm trying to say that we're not alone in it. Hi everyone and welcome back to the podcast. I hope that everyone is doing well. Today I wanted to talk about how to get through heartbreak, how to get over someone, how to get over a breakup and all the rest that kind of falls into this topic. Now if you have watched some of my other episodes you might or might not know that a while ago I went through a breakup myself and if you watch those episodes you will also know that it was a really difficult thing for me to go through. I really struggled with it a lot but in that process I also learned a lot. Heartbreak sucks. I mean, it's really just such an awful thing to go through, but also weirdly such a universal experience that so many people can relate to. And so after going through that experience so intensely in the way that I did today, I wanted to share some ways in which I did manage to figure it out eventually and let go in the ways that I did. I would like to continue to give more of an unfiltered perspective on the experience of heartbreak and how hard it can really be while also acknowledging that you really have all the power within yourself to eventually dissolve that pain and step into your happiest, freest, most amazing version. So yeah, let's talk about that today. Also, if you enjoy my content, please feel free to like the video, comment down below and make sure that you are subscribed if you aren't already. Your support really helps me out a lot and so yeah now that we have all of that out of the way let's jump right into today's conversation part one letting go of hope Heartbreak sucks and the thought of losing someone who is so close to you or maybe you've already lost them entirely is such a difficult thing to go through and I think in that it's normal that the mind starts to wonder maybe things will turn around again maybe if I just try hard enough I can save this sinking ship or this ship that is already entirely underwater and I think hope can be a beautiful thing but in this kind of a setting it can also be really really harmful when we are holding on to a false sense of hope that isn't actually real because that is still easier than facing the pain and the loss of the situation and what it really has become. But I think then to set ourselves free, eventually we will have to let go of that hope because that kind of a hope is not love and it's actually also not worth fighting for because it's not real. 
And I think anyone who's been through the same knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's when you're in a relationship with someone where it's just continuously up and down and up and down and up and down. And so you get into this vicious cycle of thinking, maybe one day the good is going to prevail. Maybe if I just give it one more try, maybe if I just explain myself one more time, maybe if I formulate it differently, maybe if I change this about myself or that about myself maybe that's gonna make it work this time and so in the end it does work but for such a short moment that before you even know it the whole thing comes crashing down onto you again and so you keep thinking okay maybe one more try maybe one more try and you're holding on to the good moments and the good memories and the promises for dear life because you're so desperate to find something that will tell you it's going to be okay. You won't have to go through the pain of facing the situation for for what it really has become. But that's where I say we have to eventually let go of that hope because that hope is not real and it's not worth fighting for it because it's not actually real. And so how do we let go of this hope when it's no longer real? It's no longer there, but it's so painful to let it go. Um, it's definitely not easy, but I think what it really comes down to is just choosing yourself first. Like you get to a point where you realize that no other person on this planet is worth you being in so much pain. But you also realize that at some point you can no longer blame another person for that pain if you are allowing that to happen by holding on you are holding on to something that is allowing that pain within you and so then choosing yourself first means letting go you being okay and you being happy has to be more important than anything else and so you're willing to let go of anyone or anything in the pursuit of that regardless of how difficult that choice might be and then that becomes more important than the fear of what other people might think the fear of being alone the fear of the past you might have to let go of the fear of the backlash you might get like none of it matters anymore because you staying true to who you are and you staying true to your own happiness becomes more important than that and you're willing to go through whatever storm and pain and loss it is that you have to go through to hold true to that because that becomes the most important choice for yourself simply choosing yourself first and I'm not saying that it's easy you know the truth of the matter is that for me it took me to arrive in a really really dark space where I then started to think okay now letting go is actually less scary than keeping this going and that was not a good point to arrive at at all because letting go for me was terrifying and so to think that now what I was doing was less terrifying was more terrifying than letting go was just a very very bad state to arrive at and it makes me sad when I think back to how little I valued myself in those moments and it makes me sad to think how many people go through the same and so was it an easy choice to make no do I wish I would have taken that choice sooner yes do I wish I would have not burned myself to the ground before taking that choice yes would I do it differently now yes 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 all of that yes but I was also a different version of myself back then and I'm okay with that it's really not a nice thing to do to someone to give someone hope that you might change or that the relationship might work out if that hope is not based in any reality like that's such a harmful to harmful thing to be at the receiving end of but at the same time you also get to a point where you realize holding on to that false sense of hope that things are going to work out or things are going to change if there is no evidence of that in this moment that is a horrible thing to do to yourself but it's also a very unkind thing to do to someone else as I said, people only change if they want to. And so to ask someone else to change if they don't want to and they're not giving you any evidence that they want to do that, that's really 
also not a kind thing to do to someone else regardless of how shitty or hurtful their behavior might be and that's when you get to a point where you say okay I'm actually gonna let go because I'm letting go knowing that that's the best choice for myself and everyone else involved. So my conclusion is having hope that you and somebody else might work out at some point if you just try hard enough, that kind of a belief and hope in someone can be a beautiful thing, but not if it's one sided and also not if you holding on to that hope means you having to compromise your own values, your own happiness, your sanity, your well-being and your health, because that kind of a hope is not love you really want to let go of that because you really really deserve better than that part two trust your own process i think heartbreak and breakups can be especially difficult to navigate because it's something that so many people go through but then also something that we talk about and consume so much like we have endless songs and books and movies about heartbreak and so for me when I was going through my breakup I suddenly started to feel all of this pressure as to how I'm supposed to go through this experience so that I'm experiencing it in the correct way I guess and so it's like you should get over it but not too fast because then you're cold but also not too slow because then you're weak and overreacting and do talk about it but not too much and do move on but not too fast and this and that and this and that until eventually I realized there is no right or wrong way to go through heartbreak you just have to go through it in the way that is unique to you regardless of what other people think of that because i think we heal best when we heal in the way that is true to us and to do that you cannot care about what it looks like or what other people think of it you just have to be yourself i always kind of debate within myself how much of this process i want to have online because I really believe in sharing and being vulnerable but at the same time there's a lot that I want to keep offline so it's a little bit hard for me to like talk about it sometimes but what I will say is that a year after the breakup I was still so 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 upset also because there were just still so many difficult situations that I was going through as a result of all of that which made it much harder to move on and so I remember one specific day this was like a year after the breakup I was in a cafe in public um just like getting something done I can't remember and something happened and so I like started crying in the cafe in public I was just like bawling my eyes out and then I like kind of left and I remember on my way home I just felt so stupid for me it felt like nobody really cared about it anymore and everyone had kind of moved on at this point and I felt like I was sitting there still feeling like someone had just bulldozed over my heart I guess also like a couple of days before I had met a friend and I remember that friend had also gone through a breakup a little bit different than my situation but it was still a breakup and I just remember that person telling me how they were so happy now and they felt so free um, and they had moved on and it was just so great and I was like why am I not managing this like why am I not further than I could be and why are other people further than me which like of course there are other people who also went through it in the way that I did but I just couldn't see that in those moments I remember that evening I went home and I researched online I was like how long does it take to go through heartbreak because I was like I need to know um what's going on and so I remember I came across one guy who was saying like oh scientifically blah 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 it takes like six months in the brain to like 
get over it and I was like okay um and then there was another girl who was talking about her experience with heartbreak and she said um that it was really hard and I was like oh, okay she's in the same boat as me but then she ended the video by saying oh and ladies um don't worry I felt like I was gonna be sad for six months but it's never gonna take that long I'm sitting here three months later and I'm thriving so just keep going it's not really that difficult actually and I really really appreciate that these people were sharing their experiences and every experience is valid in their own way but I'm just saying for me in those moments that made me feel so bad about myself because already being in so much pain is hard but then when you start judging yourself for what you're going through it just makes the whole thing so much worse. The thing is, at some point, I had beaten myself up for not being where I should be for so long that I got to a point where I just stopped. Like I just, I could no longer sustain the additional judgment that I was putting onto myself with what I was already going through. And so I got to a point where I just said, fuck it. Literally, I don't care anymore. I'm just going to go through this in my way and I don't care about what it looks like or what other people think of it or how other people are reacting to it. I'm just going to do me. And it took me a long time to get to that point. But I would say that point and that decision was actually the moment where I set myself free. It wasn't the point where I was over it. It was when I just said, I'm going to accept myself that's where I personally really found freedom in a way so anyone I meet now who asks me how did you get through heartbreak how did you get over it blah 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 blah. I always say you just have to go through it in the way that is unique to you and don't care what anyone else thinks of it so if you just want to cry for one week and then move on with someone else then you're allowed to do that but if you're sitting there a year after still crying and super upset then that's also okay nobody can tell you that you should be further or less far than you actually are because it's your process and the biggest gift you can give yourself is to simply go through it in the way that is right for you because we all get over it eventually and when you're on the other side none of it matters anymore but to get to that point you just have to stay true to who you are like, for example, around six months after the breakup, I remember everyone was already slowly like over it and nobody really cared about it anymore. People weren't really asking me about how I was anymore. I felt like this was like, OK, it just happened now and it is what it is. And I remember around that point, I actually uploaded a video um, where you see me crying and I'm just saying how shitty it is what I'm going through and how difficult that experience is and for some people that might have been ridiculous and if I would have cared what other people thought of me I would have not been able to put that up but that video now looking back was such an important part of my process and of my healing like I had to do that to get me to where I am today now would I do it again today Probably not. I have taken that video down now. But in that moment, it was such an important part of my journey. And that's what got me to where I am today or the moments where I just broke down because I was feeling that even though everyone around me was telling me, Alina, this is way too long ago that you should still be upset about it or the moments where I was just myself and I was going through the experience as me I feel like that's really what eventually allowed me to let go and this also applies to moving on you know I think there is this idea that you've only really moved on from someone else if you have someone new like that was my most asked question through my breakup do you have someone new do you have someone new and I think that's just so ridiculous because moving on and letting go is an internal process it has nothing to do with what you're presenting to the outside or what something looks like or what you're doing because you can move on with someone else and still be entirely broken within and you cannot move on with someone else and be fully healed and vice versa and everything around and crossover and whatever all the options are like that is not 
correlated to anything. And so I think we have to stop putting this pressure on ourselves of what moving on looks like and what we're supposed to do to move on when really there is no right or wrong way to move on. You just have to be yourself. That's how you're going to move on. I think to fully heal from a situation, we first have to accept it fully for what it is. And so to accept whatever heartbreak or pain or sadness that we're in without wanting it to be any different, without asking ourselves to be further than we are, without trying to speed up the process and without caring what other people think of it. And the funny part is we think, oh, if I fully see this pain for what it is, then I'm just going to stay stuck in it forever. But it's actually the opposite. When we fully see the pain for what it is, we also create the opportunity to fully let it go. Like you come out the other side completely and entirely free of it on every level because fully looking at it for what it is and going through it also creates the opportunity to then fully, fully let it go. So to anyone who's going through heartbreak at the moment, just know that you do come out the other side and on the other side, you will think, oh my God, why was I ever so upset about another person? And you will feel so free and so happy and you will get to that point eventually. But to get to that point, the biggest advice that I can give you is to just be yourself and to just accept and embrace whatever you're going through, knowing that everything is temporary. And as I said, you will come out the other side. But the biggest gift you can give to yourself in that process is to simply accept yourself and to go through it in the way that feels unique to you. All right, everyone, that is all I wanted to share for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm very much looking forward to connecting with you in my next episode.